So I began my experiments in search of mortality. I'd make some adjustments to equal. Doom Patrol has been making silent but big waves on the small screen ever since it made its debut in 2019. Even before their debut, fans of the DC Universe have been hyped up when the ragtag band of unlikely heroes had ended up making an appearance in one of our DC Universe's own titans. Ever since its debut on television, fans and viewers have been comparing the two left and right, but each have their own unique charm and appeal to people. Given that it's a series with superheroes in it, it's sure to involve a lot of special effects and CGI. So, for today's episode, we're going to be discussing some behind the scenes of Doom Patrol, as well as the CGI involved that makes this series come to life on the small screen. Fair warning though, this episode does contain spoilers, so heads up. But let me back up a bit and give you a quick overview of Doom Patrol, and maybe you'll get hooked into it more than you think. Also, before we start the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that post notification bell so that way you can keep up to date with all the videos we put out. Make way for the unlikely heroes. The Doom Patrol is here to save the day, or so everyone would like to think. The TV series is based on DC Comics' superhero series of the same name. It was adapted into television by Jeremy Carver, who is also exclusively producing the show. It revolves around several individuals named Crazy Jane, Cliff Steele, otherwise known as Robo Man, Rita Farr, and Larry Trainer, or the Negative Man, who resigns in the Doom Manor after being rescued and sheltered by Dr. Niles Calder, or simply called the Chief. But things aren't quite as they seem, since these individuals met with an unfortunate accident which led them to live estranged lives, shunned by humanity, and what's worse is that they discovered that the Chief was the one behind these accidents that changed their lives forever. So on to the part with the magical eyes, special effects. The magic of special effects and prosthetics. Other than Crazy Jane who's played by Diane Guerrero and the glamorous Rita Farr portrayed by April Balby, the actors who needed enhancement for their persona were Matt Boomer and Matthew Zuck's shared role as Larry Trainer and Negative Man, as well as Brennan Fraser and Riley Shannon as Cliff Steele or Robo Man. Of course, Rita's inconsistent and gelatinous state is also part of the series that needed special effects, but these two men have prosthetics applied to them to make them look the part. Encore VFX lends a hand to bring Doom Patrol to life. Like many other DC films, Doom Patrol was brought to life thanks to Greg Berlanti, a famed executive producer who's brought forth the DC Universe characters to life, like The Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Titans, Legend of Tomorrow, Black Lightning, and Batgirl. Berlanti is assisted by the executive creative director and visual effects supervisor of Encore VFX, Armin V. Kevorkian. Quote, as far as roles go, I'm heavily involved with Flash, Supergirl, Titans, and Doom Patrol, shared Kevorkian. After the first year of personality working on Black Lightning, I handed it off to Kim Rasad, one of our other supervisors here, to maintain that look. He shared exclusively with VFX Voice. If you think working on a lot of superhero films means you'd get the hang of it at one point, then you're sadly mistaken. Since most of these superheroes have varying powers and storylines, the visual effects artists need to consistently design the layout of the project. Befores and Afters also posted a video on YouTube that highlighted Kevorkian's team's works on season one visual effects, with much emphasis on Rita yielding on her gelatinous state. As explained by Kevorkian, quote, Doom Patrol pilot was about 350 shots total. Our most challenging sequence was the blob sequence where we had to get not only the look right, but speed and such. We initially tried simulating it rolling down the street, but soon discovered we had to hand animate for the control that we needed. Many of the shots with Robot Man had to have him painted out and replaced with all CGI versions so that his performance and overall placement worked better with sequence. In an article posted by BeforeAndAfters.com, Kevorkian shared some of their visual effects that provided to be a challenge for the team on season two. He went on to say, quote, we had to match, move, and recreate a lot of live action characters in order to track and integrate the wings breaking out of the bodies. This went through pretty much all the departments because after tracking match move, the animation was then handed over to simulations, not only for wings movement, but also slime and blood. The negative man in the body of Larry Trainer. For starters, we'll talk about Larry Trainer, aka the negative man. As we all know, he was all 
dashing and debonair back when he was still in human form as Captain Lawrence, Larry Trainer, a former U.S. pilot who had the unfortunate accident to not only be attacked, but latched onto as well by the negative spirit. In both the DVD and Blu-ray release of the second season, it included a detailed feature on Larry's effect entitled The Magic of Makeup, Larry's Look, which is narrated by Bill Johnson, the show's makeup FX designer. Johnson further claimed that he didn't want the characters to look horrific, but more so of being beautiful, to which he stated, quote, the idea is we didn't want it to be horrific. We wanted it to be kind of beautiful. So we spent some time coming up with that design and then that look and came up with something that I really think is pretty special, he added. Characters like Larry, a little more complicated because Larry is more of a translucent character, Johnson explained. Larry's look from what I've seen in the comics was more like a skull. We obviously cannot do that because the prosthetics would make it look kind of cheesy. So that's why we made it where his skin, you can see through it. You can see bone underneath it if you look really closely. We'll do tattoos underneath the prosthetics. There's veins and marbling that help create the unusual look that he has. And then we go over it with interest. That takes a while to get his makeup done, but it's really interesting because when the light hits it in certain ways, it's maybe a certain color. When light hits it another way, it'll give you a different color because of the indrescent colors we use. The secret child of Niles Calder and Owa entered Dorothy Spinner. In the second season, another important character is introduced to the show, Dorothy Spinner, the chief's daughter who's been in hiding from the world due to her powers and looks. Despite her childlike appearance though, she has the power to bring her imaginary friends to life which also brought forth the villain of the season two finale, The Candlemaker. Her character is portrayed by Abigail Shapiro, a 20-year-old who can relate to Dorothy's feelings of being stunned since she too experienced a similar event during her childhood. Shapiro was born with cleidocranial dysplasia, which is a rare genetic condition that ends up affecting the growth of teeth and bones, especially in the face, skull, and collarbones. Shapiro had stated in an interview once that experiencing this disease pushed her to play the role of Dorothy. In the series, Dorothy looks pretty much much like any other 11 year old girl. If you look past her face, that's quite similar to a monkey's face, which brings her so much shame. Since Dorothy was the daughter of Niles Calder and Owaya, a hairy, almost ape-like woman, she took not only her mother's abilities, but also her facial features as well. In an interview with the Nerd Daily, Shapiro shared how she was transformed on set daily to achieve Dorothy's looks. Thankfully, she's got a lot of veterans working with her to achieve this look, such as Bill Johnson and Travis Pates, who were put in charge of the the design of the makeup and prosthetics. Shapiro shares, quote, I really got to transform myself completely for a role, which is what I've always wanted to do. I also want to give a shout out to Derek and Eric Garcia, who did the prosthetic makeup every day. I felt honored to be wearing their artwork on my face every day, and I had so much fun working with them. Since her face is mostly covered with CGI, she had to make adjustments to her acting to bring her character to life. She also found a way of expressing her character's emotions and puts emphasis on her eyes saying, I tend to focus more on my eyes because that's basically the only thing on my face that doesn't have prosthetics. The biggest challenge was working with the fake teeth. I had to overcome the diction issues that came with wearing the fake teeth while also doing a British accent, but I love challenges, so it was good. Although the show does have a lot of fans, it's not as mainstream as other shows. And with that being said, they needed to film on a limited budget, which came as a struggle in some way since this is a superhero series that features a lot of special effects. These effects are added post-production, which means that they actors have to act without effects on their own and are left to perform with nothing. Despite that obstacle, Shapiro found joy in filming with nothing. Quote, it's a dream come true to be able to work with special effects now. Sometimes I'll be talking to nothing, just imagining something there, while other times there's certain characters played by actual actors in CGI costumes. She further added, quote, it's definitely a good way to exercise your imagination. I honestly love it so much. And with that, we're wrapping up the behind the scenes tale of Doom Patrol with their CGI special effects. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode as well, and maybe next time you'll appreciate more of the visual designer's work once you watch the show. Keep an eye out for season three, which will presumably premiere by late 2021 if conditions are favorable and the global health situation doesn't hinder production and filming. If it does, we might have to wait until 2022 for the premiere. But anyway, if you'd like more of this content, please click the like and subscribe button to our channel, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for tuning in.